two of the most interesting conversations that ever happened in my classroom was when I asked one of these two questions. The first one was, what do you notice about the hundreds chart? The second one was, does anybody have any questions about the hundreds chart? And it was crazy because I didn't realize how much the kids had been really looking at the hundreds chart. I mean, we count every day in kindergarten, but how much they had been looking at it and wondering about it. And it started a really, really great conversation between me and my kindergartners, which kind of led right into the first part of this book, Coral Counting and Counting Collections, which is a great book and I highly, highly recommend it. I had been doing counting collections for years at this point and I was like, I feel like that's kind of what coral counting was, like that kind of conversation. And I really wanted to utilize that structure as best as I could. So I went back in, gave it a read, and then I started um, coral counting with my students and it just really made a huge difference in the way that they looked at numbers and the way they thought about our number system. So what is coral counting? As a group, like I said, we count in kindergarten all the time, every day trying to learn to count to 100. But coral counting, the way that it's described in this book, kind of takes it a step further. So when you're doing coral counting, you are counting together corally, but also the teacher as we're counting is writing down the numbers that we are saying and then ask the kids what they notice and what kind of things they can pull out of that little section that we counted. That being said, it does require some planning and thought on your part of what number range you wanna work with and the way that you want it to be presented to pull out different patterns or draw attention to different things in our number sequence and number system. So when you're planning a coral count, you really need to think about three things. What it is that you wanna call attention to, the way that you present the numbers that you're counting and the range of numbers that you want to use. So coral counting is a great way to really dig into some number sequences that are tripping up your kids or something you want to start to learn and practice. So coral counting is great for number order, skip counting, crossing a decade, so maybe counting from like 27 to 35, if that if the 29 to 30 range was really tricky for the kids to remember. Also great for when you're moving beyond the hundreds chart and using moving from two digit numbers to three digit numbers to see kind of what that looks like and likewise from three digit numbers to four digit numbers so those are just some ideas of things you might want to use counting collections for crossing over just a small section so once you kind of have your goal in mind of what you want to draw attention to you need to decide how many numbers you're going to count is it going to be a bigger range or a smaller range what would be best for your purpose to pull out the patterns or really discuss the certain goals that you have thought of during this planning process. And the last thing is the direction. How is your coral count going to go? You could do horizontal, you go from one to 10, and then underneath 10, go back to 11 to 20, writing the one 11 underneath each other. If you are looking to have the kids notice that the once place starts to repeat or something along those lines. You could also have the count go vertical, so starting like one, two, three, four, five, and then starting from the top, that's a really great way to pull out maybe the number that's in the tens place, especially with T numbers. I've used that one before. That's really helped my kids because a lot of times they'll reverse the order of their numbers if they're trying to write 16, they'll write 61 because it starts with the six. But really drawing attention to the fact that T numbers always start with a one. They don't start with it with whatever number it sounds like when you're counting a T number. You can also start at the bottom and go up that and go up, which mirrors the actual value of the numbers that you're counting. So that's another way that you might want to think about planning your count. So whilst you're counting, it's important to remember to remind your kids that we're counting corally, that means together, it means you can't rush through, and also that they might need to go a little slower, slower than normal for for us to keep up when we're writing the numbers that we're counting. So after you've written the numbers, then comes recording their thinking. So I like to have different color markers available. So every time a student will tell me something that they noticed, I will either underline what they're talking about or circle what they're talking about and write a little note summarizing what they've said or review later on. And the great thing about recording all of their thinking and doing it in different colors is it helps other kids see what the person who's sharing was talking about. So it might help them realize or 
notice different patterns that they hadn't seen before, or from there spark a new pattern or come up with new noticings that they hadn't seen before it was color coded. And of course, at the end, kind of as a wrap up, um, you can go through the notes that you've taken to kind of review what it is that we were looking at. Now, a corner cut can really be used at any time, but I like to use it most for a warm up, but you could definitely use it as a review at the end of your workshop block. You can use it with small groups. If a certain number of kids or just a few kids are having trouble with a specific number sequence, you might wanna focus it on that with a smaller number of kids so they can really start to understand. It's really good anytime and very, very quick to use. And choral counts, especially, I started doing digital choral counts in 2020 during pandemic teaching, but you can definitely do it either way. You can do digital or you can do on chart paper or on normal paper and just show, project what you're writing onto a document camera so that all of the kids can see. If you'd like to take a look at those templates, those digital templates, or on a planning sheet, I will have those linked down below, as well as a blog post with all this information written out that you can refer back to if you choose. Now, hearing about it and actually seeing it done is completely different. So for this next part, I'm just gonna give you kind of a walkthrough of a choral count as if I was talking to my students, how I would introduce it, the things that I would say to remind them, how I would take notes, just to give you some ideas of what it might look like in real life with your students. Today we're going to go from 5 to 22. I want you to think about the number that comes after 5 and remember we are counting together. 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22. Okay, let's take a good look at these numbers and tell me, do you notice anything about these numbers that's sticking out to you? Oh, you see that each of the numbers in the middle starts with the number one. I'm gonna write that down here so we don't forget. The first number in the middle column starts with number one. Does anybody else notice anything in these numbers? Oh, you notice that in the third column, they both of the numbers start with two. You're noticing that in the first line, they're all single digits, and in the second line, those digits repeat. So there's five and 15 at the end, six, 16, seven, 17, and they keep repeating. Oh, you're noticing that the numbers get bigger as you go down. So starting from 11, 12, 13, they get bigger, and the number in the ones place is getting bigger too. One, two, three, four. That's a great noticing. Oh, you're noticing that the second number repeats or the numbers in the one place if you go across, up on the top also. you're noticing that the numbers are repeating. So 11 has a one and one, and then 22 has a two and two. I wonder, do you know where the next repeating number like that might be? Can you figure out where the 33 would be? This is showing how you might do the same thing in a digital version instead of written out. So if you were distance learning or you wanted to just go digital and be able to save their work in a more compact place, you could do the same thing just digitally. It might take a little bit longer to change all of the colors and things, but you can definitely do the same thing by highlighting different areas and then adding their thoughts into the speech bubbles.
something else that I really love about coral counting is when you've completed your coral counting session or getting closer to the end, you can ask the kids to make predictions. Like, for example, where would the next double number come from? Or where would the 40 be in this counting sequence? So if they're getting familiar with the number patterns, they'll be able to predict where they go, which is really something that we want, we want them to understand. Hunters try to understand a number sequence for when they move on to other grade levels and other topics. So I hope you found this video helpful and let me know if you're gonna try coral counting in your room and feel free to let me know if you have any questions down in a comment. Happy counting and I will see you next time.